So now that the shop floor is complete, I can start moving things on to the new side. And the first thing, the very first piece of equipment that I'm going to be putting on the new side, I'm excited, is going to be the press that's sitting in the back of my pickup truck. It's been in the truck for now probably a month. And the only reason it's still in there is because I didn't want to have to unload it and then move it again. So let's back the truck up there, rig this press up. It's relatively heavy. Find a way to get it where we want it. So I am that guy who uh, paints something and then constantly over there touching it with his finger to see if it's dry. That's me. Same with concrete, sealer. It's too much to handle. So here's the plan. We're going to use this underrated 500 pound hoist to lift this probably six or 700 pound press. That's a guess. I have no idea what this thing weighs. And will it lift it up high enough to get it out the back of the truck? Probably not. I'll probably have to pick up on it and move it. And will it swing? Probably so. Really not all that heavy. 
So kind of a sketchy setup, not really, a, a, depends on the way you look at it, gravity's in our favor. Two before, casters, just attached with a couple bolts on each, you know, it should, should work. And this will let us roll this thing where we want it. It's really not all that heavy. So surprisingly, this is a 50-ton shop press, or at least that's what the sticker says, anyway, which is pretty good. That's a strong press. Now, I scratched the coating on this because I was interested to see what type of paint this is. It's turned pink from being out in the sun for years, uh, but it's some sort of baked-on finish, some sort of powder coat, I believe. So chances are I'll just scuff this thing and give it a good paint job, and it'll be just fine, right? No reason to remove all this coating. So that's promising. You can tell this thing set outside for years. But, you know, that doesn't mean it's bad, right? 
just means it's going to need some TLC before it gets up and going. Now let's look at the pumping mechanism, which I showed sometime in the past. It's you have three ways <laughs> you have three ways of moving the hydraulic ram on this thing. You have the high speed low pressure pump. You have the high pressure low speed pump. See one shaft or one piston in here is bigger than the other. The bigger pistons for the higher volume, right? Lower pressure. And then you have the air. You can hook this to an airline and uh, you know, squeeze that and it will run down uh, the press ram that way. So three ways of actually using this, which is nice. So you can see the rust on these pistons and we definitely don't want to run that up into the seal body and damage that seal because um, that's what it would do. Let's see if we can get them to gum down because I don't know if this thing works or not. Right, I have no idea if this press even functions at all. So let's see if we can break these loose, extend them down, and then see if maybe we can move these a little bit to move the ram of the press. Let's see. So the reason this thing is the first piece of equipment in the shop is because I need my truck in order to get the sealing material for in here so I can hold some heat in here. And that moved easy. Okay, so we'll have to clean up that rust on that. We don't want to push that up past them seals, but it feels good. Actually, it feels pretty smooth. Let's try this little one. Ah, same way. Is that open or closed? Yeah, that's closed. Let's see if we can move the ram with this. So yes, the ram actually works. Careful not move that damaged area into that body. So that's surprising. I would have thought this thing wouldn't work considering it was sitting outside, but uh, it does. Now, you know, does it leak back real bad? Who knows, right? But it does move. moves quite well. Let's see if uh, it will retract. And it does. But it's really slow. Could be because it's like 25 or 30 degrees out here. So we just got some light emery paper trying to clean the rust off the bottoms of these because I know if I don't do something either me or somebody's gonna come out here and run this rust up into that uh, body. Well, that cleaned up pretty good. Pretty easy. I don't want to use anything really aggressive to scratch, scratch these up. I just want to knock off the high spots. That's all. looked a lot worse than what it was. You see this same thing with old pieces of uh, equipment on in hydraulic cylinders. You always want to clean up the cylinder, the part that's exposed, if it has rust on it, before you retract it into the body of the uh, hydraulic cylinder. Right? Or else you just transfer all that sharp rust right past the seals and it just make some leak where they may not otherwise, right? There we go. That's good enough on those. Let's clean up the main ram uh, rod. So it cleaned up pretty well. There's a few spots on it, but you know they won't hurt a thing. We'll probably have to pull those springs off, and well, wouldn't have to, but soak those in some some of that de-rusting agent. So I noticed that the gear on this thing is all chewed up. This is what lifts the table um, on this press. You know, obviously the cable's all rusty and would have needed replaced anyway, but uh, this is chewed all up. This is a that is cheap, I think is. You can get for one of these eighth inch sheet metal two pieces of eighth inch sheet metal riveted together to form 
the gear and obviously the alignment on the little pinion down here is not very good because it just chewed the teeth off of one side of this gear. So this thing's going to get a paint job, but I'm going to be waiting on warmer weather to do that. So at one time this thing was red. So I picked this up from our favorite uh, cheap junk store. All right. But actually this one that I picked up just from a quick look is better uh, than the one that that was on this originally. Let's see if we can get this out and compare the two. So this one actually has a, looks like a 3 eighths of an inch wide, maybe 10 millimeter, something like that, welded on gear. A thousand pound capacity, uh, where this one, you know, just stamped gear, uh, two piece riveted together. So much, much nicer gear arrangement uh, on the new one than the old one. Although everything else looks pretty much identical. Um, other than the little gear in here as well, you can see that's a stamped little gear. Hopefully you can see that welded onto that shaft. And this one may be stamped as well, but it's definitely much wider. No, it's, well, maybe it is welded and then machined, but uh, you get the idea. It's definitely nicer arrangement than the old unit. No, it's not. Hmm. I'm going to have to uh, open up those holes in the bottom of this one. That's unfortunate. I'll just file them. Because yeah, all my stuff's... <laughs> Let's just call it put up at the moment. So that is it. And it's got quite a throw. That's probably a eight inches to a foot. Let's see if it retracts. I mean, it retracts slow. It's probably because it's so cold out here. That would be my guess. So this thing actually has three ways to run the ram down. Like I said, it has a high pressure, low speed, uh, low speed, high pressure, and then it has an air actuated uh, way to run it down as well, which is pretty neat. I hope that it works, but I'll be absolutely blown away if it does. It just seems like this stuff is not in the best shape ever was. This is really sticky, the valve here, which is not that big a deal, right? But, you know, it is an issue. It's completely packed full of mud probably from some wasp or uh, just being dropped in the mud, most likely. And then that uh, is awful loose. Probably need some O-rings replaced in there. But let's clean the mud out of that and give this a shot. See if it works. Completely packed full. Not good though. Is that ram moving? No, the ram's 
just not moving. Uh, hmm. You look and tell me if it's moving. It's not. Eh, maybe a little. It's not shutting off like it should. There it goes. This thing's sticky. I'm sure we'll have to do some work in there. Huh. So let's try this again. That was 60 PSI, that first go around. Now this is 150. And no, it's not working. Can't wait to get everything straightened out the way I can get to my tools good instead of using just whatever.
Here, smell this brand new roll of Super 88 electrical tape. Love this stuff. Anytime I cut a braided steel cable like this, I wrap it in tape first. So when you do cut it, you know, it doesn't splay apart, right? Then I just cut it right through the tape. And it un unrolls like crazy. So hopefully you can see that. See, it didn't just start coming undone. You know, sometimes they don't, but you know, that assures that they don't. So it's really clever the way that this hoist works to lift both sides, right, from just from pulling from one point. Uh, pretty neat the way that they work that out. We'll get this strung up and I'll show you. So our cable's relatively tight from our hoist up and around this one pulley in here and to the pin that goes through the table. So it'll lift this side. Now the other cable that actually hooks to the bottom of the table goes around, up, 
around a pulley here and down to this one here. It needs to be at least as tight as this one or tighter uh, because when we lift the table, it will tilt most likely if these cables are not properly tensioned. So we put a loop in the end of this cable and we're going to pull it snug with a ratchet strap. That's the thought anyway. This is the main clamp and it's loose, but I've got a loop in the end of the cable. It's just pulling the whole mechanism tight, that's all. Hopefully that makes sense. Just a little, even if it's a hair tighter than the other one, probably wouldn't hurt anything because it's so much longer. this excess, not that it's going to need that much, I'm going to try this thing, see if it actually will lift the table now. So one more quick look for those that are interested. The winch just wraps around this first pulley and hooks to a pin that runs through the table. Then the second cable hooks to the bottom of the table, goes down around one, two, three more pulleys, and then comes back over and hooks to the other pin that runs through the table, right? There's two. And that's it. When this one gets pulled, it actually pulls this one as well and in turn, through all those pulleys, lifts the other side. Simple, simple. So I'm either going to have to get or make some press plates. This is 15 inches across. Probably the minimum a press plate could be would be a foot. Uh, you know, plates of steel, half inch, not half inch, probably be more than that. Probably more like an uh, inch thick or three quarter inch thick plate uh, to spread over this large gap because you can't press nothing on that, right? But having this big open space is a plus, right? You never know what you're going to be putting through through the press. So. That's what the plates of steel are for. And I'll have to get some of those made or you know, cut some myself or something. We'll see. But uh, you know, I'm excited to have a press, man. It's been, I've wanted one forever.
a good big one, right? I've had little ones. So that's nice. Obviously, there's a lot more work that needs done to this thing. And when the weather warms up a bit, we'll take it outside and uh, give it a paint job and go over some of the mechanicals on it, right? It's probably to a point where you can use it, but it's not to the point where I would call it finished. Now, I know a lot of people probably did not see the video where I finished or where my contractors finished the concrete in here. A lot of people were waiting on that. I posted it earlier this week, and I know a lot of guys only look for my videos on Saturday. So go back through my channel and watch the final video on this concrete job because it, it's amazing. I'll say that. It's awesome. And uh, this place is feeling more like a shop every day, right? Working on getting the ceiling in here so we can temperature control this environment and get it uh, you know, comfortable for both me and for all my equipment that's sensitive to rust and you know, just corrosion in general. So that's it, I think. Huge thanks to anybody who supported me on this project and helped me get to this point, right? Still got a ways to go, but you know, the major things I think are behind us, even though the, the ceiling will be a big job, but that's it. So, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Viewers, patrons, subscribers. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Waiting for the sun to blossom